Thank you, John. Good, a- good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this consultative meeting, please not the word, uh, <coughs> of members of the City Plans Panel. My name is Councillor Jim McKenna, and I will be chairing today's meeting. The meeting is taking place as a remote consultative meeting in light of the current guidance in respect of COVID-19 pandemic. In the interest of transparency and openness, the meeting has been publicized in the usual way with the agenda and report pack available online. And the meeting is being live streamed to the city council on the city council's website so that the public can observe the meeting without needing to be present. As a remote meeting, the meeting will be consultative only and is not uh, legally able to take any formal decisions. Any recommendations from us today uh, will be uh, referred to the next physical meeting of the committee for approval. Before we begin, I will ask those presents to introduce themselves uh, and I will start with Councillor Blackburn. Thanks, Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, Councillor David Blackburn, family and Workley Ward. Thank you, David. Uh, next, Councillor Colin Campbell. Good afternoon, everyone, from a slightly foggy Hockley. Um, uh, I hope uh, we have a, a pleasant meeting. Uh, it's unfortunate we're not able to meet together, but uh, COVID being what it is, it's... Okay looking a bit dangerous at the moment, so. Indeed it is. Hopefully we'll be back together soon. I hope we will be too. Can I uh, call on Councillor Peter Carlill then, please? Good afternoon, everyone. Councillor Peter Carlill, Carville and Fasley Ward. Okay, thank you, Peter. Uh, Councillor Finnegan. Um, Robert Finnegan, Councillor for Morley North, live from Morley Town Hall. (laughs) (laughs) Councillor Al Garthwaite. Councillor Al Garthwaite, heading in Hyde Park Ward. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Latty, please. Good afternoon, Councillor Graham Latty, Geisley and Rawdon Ward. Thank you, Graham. Councillor Elizabeth Nash. Sorry, just struggling to unmute myself. I'm Councillor Elizabeth Nash, representing Hunslet and Riverside Ward. Thank you, Liz. Councillor Paul Wadsworth, please. Good afternoon, Councillor Paul Wadsworth, representing Guys in Rowan Ward. Thank you, Paul. Councillor Neil Walshaw. Thanks, Chair. Hi, everybody. Councillor Neil Walshaw, heading in High Park Ward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Almas. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Gower Almas uh, from Beeston Holbeck Ward, substituting for Councillor Gruen. Thank you. Thank you, Gohard. Councillor Barry Anderson. Councillor Barry Anderson, Aslan Warfield Ward, substituting for Councillor Dan Cohen. Thank you, Barry. Uh, Councillor Jules Hesselwood. Councillor Jules Hesselwood, Bramley and Stanley Uh, Ward, and substituting for Councillor Brooks, I believe. Oh, welcome, Jules. I was about to say I haven't seen you. (laughs) Uh, Moving over to officers, may I start with Councillor David, uh, Councillor David Feeney. Uh, David Feeney, please. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm David Feeney. I'm the Chief Planning Officer for Leeds. Thank you. Uh, Daljit. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Daljit Singh. I lead the City Centre Planning Team. Uh, Tim, please. Good afternoon and seasonal greetings. Tim Hart from the City Centre Planning Team. Thank you, Tim. Steve, please. Good afternoon, Stephen Varley, Design Officer. Thank you, Steve. Uh, And Matt Hills. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. Matt Hills, Legal Officer. Thank you, Matt. Gillian McLeod. Hello, Gillian McLeod, Transport Development Services Manager. Thank you, Gillian. Toby Russell. Good afternoon, Toby Russell, Senior Technical Officer. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Uh, John Grieve, please. Good afternoon, everyone. John Grieve, Governance Services, Malby Clark, in today's meeting. Thank you, John. Uh, now moving to agenda item number one. Over to you, John. Thank you, Chair. 
Uh, agenda item one, declarations of interest. Could I ask members to declare any interest they may have? Mm. I see no indications of any interest, so I'll assume that's none. Uh, item two, apologies for absence. Uh, yes, Chair, we've got a number of apologies for absence. Councillor Brooks, Councillor um, Cohen, and Councillor Gru Councillor Brooks, Councillor Cohen, Councillor Gruen. Uh, and we have substituting Councillor Anderson, Councillor Almas, and Councillor Hazelwood. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, John. Uh, moving on then to uh, the main item on our agenda, agenda item three, which is a pre-application pres presentation for the... For, uh, for proposed development, oh, I get it out. For proposed development comprising demolition of existing building and construction of mixed use scheme comprising retail floor, floor space at basement and ground floor level and purpose built student accommodation on floors one to nine of the new building at 142 Brigade. Uh, Members are invited to provi provide informal observations on this application. Could I invite the applicants to address the panel and inform us of the proposal? May I say I don't have any details of the name of the ap applicants, so please introduce yourself as you speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Dave Rollinson. I'm Chairman of Sporforths and I'm Planning Consultants for the scheme. Um, Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to present to you. Um, clearly, we're in difficult times uh, and we're also close to the festive season. What I will do uh, initially in a moment is introduce my client, Richard Leslie from Duke Lease. Um, he will then hand over to the project architect, Ed Norman from Corsetfield and Wright. Uh, Ed will go through the scheme in detail and then pass back to me and I will pick up scheme benefits. And then clearly we would be very happy to take your questions. So I will pass on to Richard Leslie. Thank you, Dave. Can you, can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, members, and thank you for attending the plans panel during what is a busy week and a time of increasing concern for civic leaders. I'm Richard Leslie, Chief Executive of Duke Lease, the applicant. This is our first experience in Leeds and our dialogue with your officers has been a fruitful process. I must pay tribute to them for being very thorough, professional and knowledgeable. As you can see, we're used to building in city centres and we continue to see the positive rejuvenating effects developments of high quality have upon the locations in which we build. This might be an important shopping street that needs an injection from a new retailer, or a subordinate street that benefits from greater human activity, or maybe a piece of the urban realm that is simply crying out for a new approach. We recognise the important civic value of Brigger and Central Road, and I hope you will see that our approach to addressing both of these environments is positive and worthy of your support today and when our planning application comes before you in due course. Thank you, members. I shall now hand over to our architect, Ed Norman, of course, to Feen and Ray. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Edward Norman. I'm the design director of Castorfin and Wright. I think if we can start the slideshow, I will uh, talk us through the scheme. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, Chair. Councillors, members, all, and if I may, uh, season greetings as well. So we'd like to share our proposals, and we're excited to do so, uh, for numbers 140 to 142 Brigate Leeds, and known as the House of Fraser Building. Next slide, please. So, yes, we are proposing uh, the removal of the existing 1959 uh, former Woolworths building and replacing this with a retail and student accommodation scheme. Uh, this scheme will include large format retail, which is more desirable, uh, basement and ground floor, with 368 high quality student rooms above, with very good amenity space. This will all be accessed via a new active frontage onto Central Road. In summary, what we are really trying to achieve here is the following. 
we want to secure the uh, future of this key urban site with new viable use. We want to regenerate uh, and enliven uh, this key center site as well. Obviously we want to increase footfall and expenditure to help the city center and to meet the continued need for high quality purpose-built student accommodation. Whilst you know, also relieving pressure, I think, on housing stock elsewhere where this is used. Um, we will work in consideration of the Leeds Carbon Roadmap and are going to achieve a Briam excellent rate of building. And we also would like to support the public realm improvements, which are associated with the sort of corn exchange and Market Street area in the work that we do. If I could have the next slide, please. So I won't dwell on this very long. You've uh, just uh, digitally met uh, Richard, uh, but they are an award-winning property developer experienced in the repurposing and redevelopment of commercial assets across the UK. I guess more specifically in the upgrade and retention of existing retail spaces whilst also allowing new positive development above. If I could have the next slide, please. And the next, thank you. So where are we? Well, we are on Brigate, um, one of the principal arteries in Leeds, well over 500 years in the making. And we're in the retail quarter. And I think we're situated around 15 minutes walk from the town's academic institutions. We also benefit from some of the city's most prominent cultural and education assets being nearby. I think, and in my experience, this scheme is following a bit of a UK-wide trend in blending city functions and quarters, really, to achieve more of a mixed landscape of use classes, which I think uh, helps to uh, create more vibrant centres. And I think that's being proved. Next slide, please. The site is kind of enveloped by the city conservation area, but sort of just outside it, sort of snookered. Um, and as such, it needs to work very hard to respect its context. Um, there's a number of listed buildings around the site. Um, the Corn Exchange being obviously the most famous, but we're also abutted by the Grade Two listed um, Renaissance style building at numbers 133 to 137. Uh, designed by Percy Robinson. Right. Uh, next slide, please. So, Brigitte, 500 years or so in the making. The character of cities changes over time. And the character of streets and places also change, of course, to provide for changing needs. Our development site was once part of the Robinson Designed Hotel next door until it was sliced in half. Imagine doing that today. Anyway, that happened around 1930 and a new building was erected in its place. An Art Deco building followed in the 1940s, uh, prior to the incoming building, which was Woolworths. And that's the frontage that we see today for this House of Fraser. Of course, each of these iterations had a rather unusual and incongruous relationship, I would say, with the listed name and next door in terms of scale and style, but of course, I suppose, served the needs of the time. If I could have the next slide, please. So you will all be very familiar, of course, uh, but this is just two uh, good quality photographs, I think, showing a sort of dressed Portland stone facade to the existing building with those prominent recessed and punched larger format glazing portions. Um, not um, unusual, this building. I think you can see the same Woolworths in Birmingham, Dublin, London, I think Portobello Road and elsewhere. It's very typical of its time. Uh, next slide, please. So we have been very fortunate uh, to have five pre-application meetings uh, with Tim Hart and Stephen Varley, and a meeting indeed with Leeds Civic Trust to discuss our designs and also with Historic England. I could have the next slide. This has enabled us to engage in a really super, really iterative design process where we've been able to discuss scale, proportion, mass style and materiality, and sort of adapt and change the scheme as we have done so with the useful commentary uh, from those that we've spoken to. If I could have the next slide. And the next, thank you. So what do we want to do? Well, I've described it in sort of very simple terms in terms of removing a building and creating one anew. But my interest in this site, my interest in architecture is that actually I think there's a wonderful opportunity here to create a beautiful and pretty, if I'm allowed to use that word, building which respects its context and its neighbours and offers a new high quality piece of urban fabric to enhance and knit this piece of Brigitte back together. 
A building which steps in elevation and in plan to respect its neighbours and align with existing ridge heights. And the scheme would be, you know, a complete new build with retail for lower levels with the student accommodation above. The building will also use its plan form, which I'll show you later, to breathe life and light into the heart of this development plot. If I could have the next slide, please. So I'm probably a bit old fashioned. I work very much in pen, but it allows me to freely manipulate and consider form and work quickly to make adjustments that we hope are satisfactory and then become rather fabulous. Um, so we've this has led us to constantly review and redraw our scheme throughout the consultation. If I have the next slide. And a ma uh, all, all manner of context views have been considered uh, in the development of the scheme in short and long distance and massing altered to respect these views. I just uh, draw your attention to the image on the right actually here. Um, it's quite an interesting conversation that we had where the kind of foreground, if you're looking from the corn exchange, has the very heavy stone uh, of that building itself. And then the midground has that kind of sort of mid-weight uh, brick architecture. And then what we've tried to do is say, well, what's the next step beyond that? And we're using sort of zinc and opaque glazing and lighter materials uh, as we move uh, further into the distance. And I think it's actually quite a successful way of reducing the impact of the building uh, on this particular view. If I could have the next slide. As I said, I mean, base studies, materiality, weight of material have all been considered throughout to ensure the building does not impose into existing views. Heavier materials at the base, and lighter at the top. And again, that diagram on the right was kind of illustrating that in a sort of simple block mass eye view. I could have the next slide. So what do I love about Leeds or what do we love? Well, the arcades and arches of Leeds, the Cross and County arcades, Guineary Wharf and elsewhere, uh, echoes of these forms form an important part of the visual heritage of Leeds. And we want to celebrate this, albeit in a contemporary interpretation. I could have the next slide. We'd like to reintroduce some of the carved detail, the coins, the fluting and motifs seen on some of the most beautiful buildings throughout Leeds, but we want to do so using modern methods of casting and molding and prefabrication. This is the way we want to approach this. I could have the next slide. So in elevation on Brigate, we want to respect the heights of the adjacent buildings, obviously particularly uh, our historic neighbor, we want to set back additional floors from key visible locations and have worked very hard to ensure that their impact is, is reduced from a number of key views. The architecture will reflect the color, detailing and language of its distinguished listed neighbor, but the building uses more contemporary and lightweight materials at upper floors to reduce their impact. Again, the structural rhythm and facade composition reflects that as some of the more elegant historic buildings to bring it. We can have the next slide, please. On Central Road, the building has very much a defined bottom, middle and top, uh, with the facade massing broken down by the changes in detail and materiality. As with Brigitte, you know, what we really want to do with this scheme is ensure that the ground floor uses create uh, interesting and active frontages. And this facade, I think, is a little bit of a more contemporary take on the classic facade composition that we've shown to Brigitte. If we could have the next slide. This is just a sort of sneak view, I suppose, uh, when viewed from Market Street, of that rear elevation. And the next one, please. And here, a simple before and after shot uh, when viewed from Duncan Street of the existing and proposed architecture. You can see actually that we're trying to marry that ridge height with the building in the distance and that when the Woolworths building was created, it's only a sort of ground plus three building, very odd relationship really with its neighbor. I could have the next slide. So, the bigger elevation shows these paired arches that I discuss, a uh, larger format retail at ground with double height space. The main body of the building in color match stone material with zinc and glass clad recessed upper levels. If I could have the next slide. The central road elevation looks to marry the materiality of Brigade elevation, but there's a great opportunity here, I think, because there's a natural curb or sweep to this street, which is kind of just faceted through the, uh, the building so at the moment. I think it's an opportunity to reinforce the perspective of that lovely sweep, again, when viewed from Duncan Street. If I could have the next slide. Here's the elevation, uh, distinct bottom, middle and top. We're looking at bronze anodized panel 
and on a heavily glazed active facade at ground with stone to the main body, as I said, and zinc and glass to the recessed upper levels for the reasons I previously mentioned. We could have the next slide. This one just shows a slightly more plain and uh, somewhat hidden, I suppose, south elevation with the recessed courtyard space. We could have the next slide. I won't dwell on these for too long, but these are important uh, drawings because they show part of that iterative process that we've been through with Leeds City Council, where we kind of chipped away at the architecture and the mass to ensure it did not compromise key views. In this case, from Duncan Street. Um, next slide, sorry. And then here from uh, Kurgut, uh, looking south, and the next slide. And indeed, the corn exchange where it is visible, I've discussed how we're using the materiality and the setbacks in the building to reduce its impact. If I could have the next slide. I mentioned earlier, we're aware that the area to Market Street and Corn Exchange and uh, the associated squares provision for public realm improvements, and we would love to connect and extend into this and include improvements on Central Road itself. Can I have the next slide, please? An additional view here, just looking north from that 4th Street, Duncan Street junction with the Yorkshire Building Society building on the near corner. Next slide, please. Just a detail of those facade treatments, um, the full height glazing, the decorative use of precasting or precasting stone and uh, black metal iron gardens and the various other details, arches and fluting. The next slide, please. This is the completed render uh, looking north on Brigitte, which I've uh, talked through a little. And the next slide, please. And that's the uh, completed render looking south this time on Central Road. You can see that curve around again and the matched heights with the building in the foreground. We could have the next one. And again, uh, a larger view of that swept curve and the setbacks that I discussed. We could have the next slide. So in terms of the internal design, uh, we are providing large format retail space over basement and ground floor. And of course, enhancing the active frontages to Brigham and Central Road. Uh, the servicing will fundamentally uh, rem remain as it is existing with off-street provision behind the central road facade, which will obviously include waste storage and other uh, less sightly things. If I could have the next slide. The ground floor to central road, I think, will be a very exciting place to be uh, with the uh, student reception and the associated amenities that will come through depending on the provider. These are often things sort of quiet areas, gyms and things, things of that effect. We could have the next slide. So uh, the scheme will provide very high quality internal and external amenity with 400 meters squared internally and 1200 meters squared of varied external amenity at a combined ratio of four and a half square meters per bed. Have the next slide. Built form, which I mentioned earlier, as illustrated, has this T-shape, uh, allowing the large light wells to illu illuminate the lower floors and offering varied amenity, different spaces, well-being gardens, and different uses and planting, depending on orientation. Indeed, there'll also be a terrace space at the top level with beautiful views over the city. Next slide, please. Here's a concept view of that uh, southern terrace on the next slide. Another one, some strange looking people that are frozen in time. And the next slide, uh, this is a concept view of the larger northern terrace and the next slide and a further view. And then if I could have the next slide, which shows the eighth floor amenity, uh, which again, I think can have some, offer some fabulous views over the city for the occupiers and the next slide, which is again, a concept view with some frozen people that tear us in the next slide. So in terms of the typical floor levels, we can see the buildings T-shape with all clusters or studios having views of the central courtyards and terraces or into the streets of Brigham and Central Road. And as the built form changes uh, through the height of the building, variations to this are offered with different lighting views. Next slide, please. The scheme offers 238 high quality cluster units and 130 self-sufficient studios with their own kitchens and bathrooms. Next slide, please. And all spaces meet requisite spatial guidelines and be fitted with high quality specification and materials. So thank you for listening through that. Um, that sort of completes the architectural component, if you like, and I'll now hand you back to David Volenson, who will walk us through the summary of benefits and no doubt ask you to move on to the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Ed, and thank you for showing us that. Um, thank you very much. Would you mind moving to the next slide, please? 
So what I really want to do now is just finish off with how the scheme aligns with the key pillars um, within Leeds of inclusive growth, health and well-being, and climate change. Um, for inclusive growth, our scheme is, as, as Ed has said, it's about a viable new use for the House of Fraser building to reflect the changing nature of city centres. We recognise um, that large format space is outmoded and we're seeking to repurpose that large format retail space. What we're seeking to do is to bring forward new high quality flexible retail space that reflects the prime location onto Brigitte, um, but also future proofs that, that space to allow for changing retail activities. The retail relates to Brigitte. That's what the retail is about. The student accommodation relates to Central Road. And therefore what we're seeking to do is to bring forward um, student accommodation and that student accommodation um, we have a demand study which we've had undertaken by CBRE and it is away from existing concentrations of student accommodation. Um, there is only one scheme within quarter of a mile of this uh, of our site and that's the Debenhams approval. So this isn't about a concentration or over concentration, it's actually about a dispersal and bringing in the students into an area which the reason for that, for, for, from our point of view, is that it brings the increased footfall and expenditure into the city centre and helps sustain the city centre. But it's also really interesting to note that the site is in close proximity to uh, activities such as Kirgit Market, so the ability, the synergy of students to be able to utilise the market. I know you've heard and will reiterate the benefits of new purpose-built student accommodation, freeing up existing housing stock elsewhere. And I'm very happy to, to talk around the demand analysis and the conclusions, but there is a very strong demand um, within Leeds for student accommodation. What it also does the student accommodation is bring more activity to Central Road. Um, and what that does is to sort of reinforce the vitality of Central Road. We accept and we respect there's disabled access, there's, there's a cafe culture there, but after dark it's quiet. And what we think the students will do is reinforce that vitality. And we're also uh, very keen to, to, to look at public realm improvements. We're cognizant of local employment agreements and the need for those, and, and that's fundamental to the DNA of my client, and we will bring that forward. Next slide, please. From a health and well-being um, point of view, clearly this is a highly accessible location. You don't need me to tell you that, but it has the benefits, therefore, of proximity to transport, retail and cultural facilities. We're bringing forward a framework travel plan, um, and that will encourage non-carbon travel and hence the health benefits associated with it. This is a car-free development. We're delivering full cycle parking provision in line with the SBD, both for retail staff and students. And as Ed has identified, we're compliant with the draft SPD for student accommodation on room sizes, configuration, internal and external community spaces. And that's not clearly just to tick a box. That's because we want to create a place. We want to address the isolation of students and we want those students to feel that this is home. We'll bring forward a student management plan that will deal with building operation and it'll also deal with issues such as student drop off and student pickup um, and the location of um, car parking facilities is covered in our framework travel plan. And we'll also address safety and potential for antisocial behaviour within this. I've already indicated more activity on Central Road is good, but we'll reinforce that self-policing through overlooking with 24 hour support and CCTV. From a climate change and sustainability point of view, Ed's indicated we're, we're working towards BRIAM Excellent. We can also comply with the policy requirements on um, emission reduction and low carbon and renewable energy technology. And the framework travel plan will set targets to, to make sure we walk the walk, so to speak, around uh, the use of walking and cycling. And we're also aware that we need to look at the future resilience of the building. We firmly believe the student need and the requirements, but we also recognise that your draft SPD look, asks us to look at future proofing. <laughs> we think the location is resilient for retail and student, but we will look at how the building is internally designed to allow for future alterations to alternative uses. But we fully recognise the student is a, steward, a sui generis use and any change of use would be um, at your discretion 
um, and that's not something we propose. We're fully committed to the PBSA. Final slide, please. The reason we put all these words on the screen was that you would get the presentation beforehand. I don't expect you to have read them now, but we just wanted to leave you with the thoughts of Tom Bridges from Arab, um, who we asked to peer review our scheme in the context of the work he'd produced for the City Council on the future of Leeds City Centre. Um, and as you can see here, and hopefully have had a chance to read, he fully supports the scheme and considers our scheme aligns with his work. So um, perhaps if you go on to the next slide, then it's simply a graphic. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully we haven't gone too far over time. We're very happy to take questions as you see fit. Thank you again. Thank you, David. Um, thank you, uh, Ed and Richard, too, for that very interesting uh, presentation. Um, moving on now, can I uh, invite members to ask questions? Um, can you do some in the old fashioned way, uh, the electronic way of by putting your hand up? Uh, and if I don't call you strictly in rotation, it's how I view the screen. I'm sorry in advance. Okay, questions from members, please. Peter, I can see your hand. Yes, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll come back with comments later on, I think. But um, just one thing I'm thinking of in this particular one is um, if I'm right, and it's been, I don't spend as much time in the city centre as I used to, unfortunately, uh, at the back of here was quite a lot of blue badge parking. And I just wanted assurances that that, um, that amount of parking would be retained there for blue badge holders or, or alternative locations would be found. And then just a bit of a, uh, a bit of an idea around, obviously it's a car free development the majority of time, but as we've seen with a number of these student accommodations, there's obviously the, the change of a day, which is incredibly difficult to manage, um, as well as a quite often constant stream of taxis picking people up in the evening. Now, obviously, they will be spending most of their time, we'd hope, in the city centre to so not have to go far, but they will have friends to visit in other areas of the city. So I wonder if we could just hear a little bit more about how that'll be managed on Central Road, so the Blue Badge parking and then change over day and, and the kind of taxis and deliveries that we may be expecting. Yes, certainly. Thank you. Uh, Over to you, David. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, you, you, you're absolutely right about the blue badge parking. And uh, we have and are engaging with our, our preferred contractor to understand the nature of how the site will be demolished and redeveloped to ensure that the demise and the hoardings and the areas allow for through, through flow of traffic and allow for retention of the blue badge areas as far as is possible. And we will commit to um, replace those and fund the cost of replacing those if we need to. But at the moment, we're clearly trying to retain them where they are. With regard to the student drop-off um, and pick-up, yes, through the management plan, we will address that. What our framework travel plan does at the moment is identify where the multi-storey car parks are, uh, and there are significant numbers in proxim proximity, and how those would operate with the student management company um, where it would be an allocated time slot and people would then walk with their belongings from that multi-storey car park through into the development um, to allow that uh, all that activity to work effectively so it's work in progress um, but we don't believe that there's any showstoppers there um, and we will ensure that the submission deals with both of those matters. Thank you David thank you for the question Peter uh, I haven't seen any more hands any more questions from members or are you saving yourself for the comments? I imagine that might be the case. Oh, Neil, I've just spotted you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jay. Yeah, that was kind of a light hand by myself. I was just, just thinking in terms of the, the rooms. Um, and it's this is quite a question for both the applicant and I guess the officers as well is just looking at our our handout. I'm not going to ask anyone to share screens again, just in case it's problematic. But just thinking in terms of the the cluster on suite bedroom, that's 12.5 meters is at the very much at the lower end of what we've seen. I think come before his chair, and I just want the the applicants take on that and where does that stand in relation to the or their other developments that's my first question for the applicant the second question for the applicant is during his um during one of the, the applicant's presentations 
you mentioned the evidence of purpose-built student accommodation freeing up regular housing for want of a better expression chair. And I just wonder if the, if the applicants could discuss their evidence of that with the panel. That'd be really helpful. And I've got a, a due cost of the, that, the same question to officers, really, chair, in due cost. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Neil, David? Thank you, um, and thank you for the question. So I'll deal with the second point, and, I, and I'll ask um, Ed to deal with the first point. From the second point point of view, um, we've engaged CBRE, who are um, national experts who have assessed um, and do assess student issues um, and student demand studies up and down the country, and very happy to, to sort of go through any of, of the numbers there. From the issue around freeing up accommodation, yes, I, I did a lot of work personally in uh, Chester, um, and I spent a lot of time looking at these issues around what we called studentification, um, and looking at the viability of the uh, ability and effect for that um, existing house of multiple occupation student house, was it viable to be able to convert it back? And we did demand studies around that and we did viability studies around that. And we came to the conclusion that it was. Um, and that, that was part of a planning application um, in that location. So between my experience and the experience from CBRE, we believe that the principle is right. Um, what we haven't done is a detailed assessment within Hyde Park or Headingley or, or, or any of those locations. But as a principle, we do believe that um, drawing students out of those locations frees it up to go back to family accommodation and it is viable to do so. Can I, um, on, your, on the size uh, elements, ask Ed to comment? Yes, and uh, thank you for the question. We've created uh, all manner of uh, student accommodation um, at Kostorfen and Wright uh, from 12 square meters up to 20 and much larger. We're finding that the 12 and a half, which I should stress isn't all of the units on this site, that would be a minimum, uh, does provide uh, sufficient arrangement, detail, comfort and otherwise. And we're constantly finding new and innovative ways of making those spaces uh, work even better. Uh, what is more, we are providing you know, good full height level glazing as well to these rooms, which I think also makes them uh, particularly good. But, you know, we're constantly looking at these and trying to refine them and seeing where we can get more space on existing plans and so on within these units. But in answer to the question, yeah, I've worked through the whole gambit uh, of sizes in my experience. OK, Th thanks for that. Just go back to Mr. Rollinson then. I think... And th thanks for that contribution. I think uh, I'd be keen to see, Chair, I'd be keen to see um, the applicant do that analysis as, with re respect to a full application coming forward. I think that'd be very, very interesting to see regarding the impact of PBSA on um, the, the rest of the housing stock. For example, it, PBSA is overwhelmingly marketed at first years. Uh, UK nationals and then a cross section of uh, international students. So I'd be keen to see how I'd be keen to see how you th they think that this might um, impact on, on th those two student groups. But also, are the um, are the applicants intending to look at the more traditional UK nationals third, fourth, with second, third, and fourth year markets chair? I think looking at someone who represents a ward, which is uh, as well as Council Garthway and Council Prior, where it's, is very much the, the, the home of the, the, the student HMOs in, in Leeds. I think it, we'd be keen to see evidence of that. I think that would be extremely interesting because we're very much keen, keen to see for, uh, housing freed up for families, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Have you a comment on that, David? I think the, uh, very happy to do as requested. I, I think the comment I, I would say is that um, the scheme we're bringing forward is both cluster flats and private um, rooms and that gives us in line with the SPD that gives us that flexibility and that range that Councillor Walshaw mentioned so that the demand analysis that we've had done looks at those cohorts that you've identified and looks at the um, their alternative supply position and at the moment the student numbers in Leeds are growing faster than the supply um, and there is a large proportion of supply that predates 2015 and the student requirements are changing significantly, their aspirations for quality are changing significantly. So all of that is within our demand analysis and our supply analysis to identify that, that, that feeds into the work that Ed is doing to make sure that the units that we propose meet that demand requirement. Thank you, David. Uh, again, I see no further hands. 
May I move on to comments, please, and invite comments from members? Councillor Campbell. Thank you, uh, Chair. I suppose I ought to start by saying um, we don't normally get such a detailed um, and obviously well thought through uh, set of designs uh, this early in the planning process. And so it is obvious from all the documentation you've sent us that, that a lot of work's gone into this. And, and uh, it shows, quite frankly. Um, I think the, I, the the principle. I am relaxed about the principle. Um, as long as we maintain the shopping frontage onto Brigate, which is important, um, then I'm okay with that. Um, the building that's there at the moment is uninspiring. I think is the best way to describe it. If there was only if there was only one of them in the entirety of Leeds uh, or in the entirety of the country, I might fight the battle to keep it, but it, it, it reflects the style of the day, if that's the best way to describe it. And the style of the day wasn't very good. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing details of the material and perhaps a, a sample of that. But I just would just raise the issue, and I think you've touched on it, but the drawings you've shown us don't really indicate clearly to me how that will happen and that's to do with the frontage onto central road as you say that's a bit of a dead area at the moment um, and certainly if we can improve uh, that area with increased footfall and an active frontage it will be a good thing so when you bring the final drawings back to plans panel could you provide me um, and probably the rest of us with some more detailing on that particular ground floor frontage and how that will actually lift that particular area. Uh, as, as I say at the moment, it's a bit of a dead area, and I think you agree with me on that one. Thank you, Chair. That's my comments. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Councillor Nash, please. Elizabeth. Uh, right, thank you. Um, I'm particularly uh, concerned about the design. The, uh, the front on Brigitte, uh, I think, uh, sits very well indeed, and I like the arches. And I think all architecture um, should respect existing architecture. I was a very young teenager when the Woolworths building was, uh, was built, and and Obviously, at the time, I, I hadn't a thought of ever becoming a councillor, which was many years afterwards. And I thought it was horrible as a, as a teenager. It just stood out like a sore, a sore thumb. And I think all architecture has to respect its neighbours. I think on Brigitte, it does. Although I, I would say the, the upper two storeys, which are, are on the roofscape, which are set back, that, that it does look a bit like an afterthought. And I wonder if that could uh, have some attention. But on Central Road, I think the building looks too uh, prominent, too bulky. I, I, I understand the design, the, the crescent design, but it, it looks too forceful, too brutal. And it's very near uh, the... Um, County Arcade and the, the buildings on the other side of uh, Central Road, they, they, they do respect, it, it's all part of that, that area and I, 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 I think it, it needs a lighter touch. But the, the general principle I'm, I'm happy with. Um, the only other thing that um, I, I would say is um, Need Civic Trust, I notice they, they requested that we keep the tree. And I would like to support that because mature trees take some while to grow. So I, I, I'm not sure what the species is actually, but um, I should like it to be kept. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, can I bring in Peter now, please? 
Thanks, Jet. Just trying to remember where my button is. Um, I think overall, I, I quite like the look of the building that we've seen so far. Obviously, we'll see um, more of it in the full application and, and, and get a clearer view of the materiality. And I think that'll be something we'll, we'll want to get a better understanding of. Um, I think, as people have said, the, in my view, the principle is absolutely fine here and we, we had this discussion over the Debenhams building as well recently um, I'm, I'm glad you brought up quite a lot around the safety of that area because when we were discussing the Debenhams area um, the Debenhams application it, I had quite a view that really yes it is heavily um, trafficked in the day um, with people passing and, and, and people in the shop fronts being able to look but actually in the evening Brigitte's quite an empty street and central road i think is probably not as bad but 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 will be the same but suddenly after after seven o'clock in the evening it, it's pretty quiet so i think um in a way it's a positive that we've got two schemes for something similar coming forward in the same area because just one on their own mm. probably wouldn't have um enough of a change to the area to get to get more of that activity late at night um and and in general i think it, it, it's quite a supported way of getting a bit more mix in those areas of the city centre. We do tend to have a very zonal thing at the moment where Brigitte is a place you go for shopping and then some of the other areas have, have been adapted to include student accommodation. This at least seen that balance because I think if we get the right balance on every street, so not too many um, residential apartments in one particular street and and um, retain the, uh, the commercial underneath those, and not just shove them all in one corner of the city. I think that's really useful to keep the, the city alive for, for 24 hours, really, because Brigitte, as I say, could could benefit from that. I've got a couple more um, comments on Central Road, I think. It's always been a really interesting road, whereas if you look down it um, on the right-hand side, you end up with quite a lot of small independent businesses, cafes and um, restaurants, etc. Uh, and, and that's a really nice little independent street but then when you looked on the left it was always a, a bit like unfortunately the back of a department store which it obviously mm. was I think mm. there's a real opportunity here for for the units mm. you've got um, on Central Road to be small units for those independent businesses and turn it back into um, turn it into a real independent street along the back there and get some real opportunity and difference I think that'll bring a lot to it uh, and, and it's a bit of a um, a mixed road there is the blue badge parking which we'd like to keep but there's there's the tree and the couple of benches that are not necessarily all coherent as an area so i think it'd be really useful to see what what that could look like out on that side and and um what policies you might have around who might occupy those um units um for commercial there because it could really make that into a really positive um addition to to leeds's um streets i think so that's my views chair hopefully that gives some some um thoughts on on what to add in the in the next stage thank you peter that was very helpful i did notice uh, ed was uh, nodding of approval of your last comments about uh, central area and what we could do to improve to improve the area i'm sure that will be a consideration yeah. when the application comes back to us uh david please and that's david blackburn Thank you, Jer. <clears throat> Give me time to find me mute there, you did. <laughs> uh, um, I'm generally supportive of uh, what's, what's been proposed. Uh, I've got to say the old Wolves building, which was built when I was about eight or nine years old, uh, uh, isn't, I, I, I won't miss that because it, it doesn't fit for where it is and this looks like it might do. Um, I've got some concerns, as Councillor Nash had, about Central Road, and and uh, as as Peter just Peter Carroll just mentioned about those businesses there, and if it looks too austere there and off-putting, um, it's not going to help those businesses there. And there's some good little businesses up there, including PDSA, which I happen to go to quite a bit. To uh, if I if I've as I've grown out of stuff during it lockdown, I've got a few of my uh, clothes have gone there. Um, but the thing, the thing is, is it, that needs to be looked after. My, my, my one concern is, and I'm not saying the student numbers are not going up, but let's put it this way: 15 years ago, we'd have never said, we'd have never thought that with that Debenhams would end up as uh, upstairs at Debenhams would end up as student flats, and the upstairs 
uh, upstairs at what was what was would end up as um, as flats. Things change, and we're all sat here, all at home in front of the computer screens. And if that were to happen with further education, uh, then the market for student flats might disappear. So I think it's important. I know it says in report and, and developer mentioned it, but we we make sure that whatever we do like this is a good use of space. It's a good use to do in, in centre. It brings people in, but make sure that if things change that are outside our control, we can change those buildings so they can be used for other purposes, like housing the rest of us. That's all, Chair. Thank you, David. Uh, Councillor Walshaw, please. <laughs> Chair, I didn't have actually had my hand up. I think it's Councillor Garthwaite next. Okay, it must have been uh, a legacy hand. Okay, Councillor Garthwaite, please. Then. Thank you. Yes, um, I agree with the principle of this. I think that um, it's a, a good use of the of the building. I very much like the the designs of the Brigitte front, frontage in particular and the curve. Um, I slightly agree with Councillor Nash that the upper two stories, even if they're not going to be terribly visible, do look like a bit of an add-on and are not as striking and um, well matched to the environment as the rest of it. Um, I'm certainly pleased that the tree is going to stay. Uh, regarding the central road developments, I think it all depends on what shops are put there, whether they match with the existing ones and that they are they add to the area rather than detracting from it. Um, on the subject of safety, um, it seems to me there's a lot being done by Safer Leeds and City Centre Management at the moment regarding safety in the city centre and more footfall there. Um, later into the evening and night will be a good thing and also that um, more residents will help to support city centre retailers especially the market which I think is very important and city centre residents are increasingly a community in their own right it's not just something that um, somewhere where people don't have any connection with the area and I think anything that encourages that with a mix of residents is a very good idea. So, yes, I'm in favour of this. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Uh, Councillor Finnegan, please. Uh, thanks, Chair. I'm really just echoing what other colleagues are already saying uh, on this. I think uh, it's to be very welcomed. I have grave concerns that unless the city centre is more flexible and evolves, uh, as office workers work from home and office buildings and other retailers uh, are struggling to fill that particular space. We need to come up with more imaginative and flexible ways of reusing these particular buildings or we lose the buildings altogether. Uh, outside that, making the uh, city centre a busier is good in terms of public safety, making sure that there's an opportunity for local shops and the market to thrive is going to be a good thing. Uh, I am broadly uh, supportive of this particular application. Look forward to it coming towards us uh, early in the new year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Robert. Councillor Latty, please. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, you mean to sound like an echo, I suppose, this because like my, my colleagues before me, I, I do uh, I do like this uh, the principle here of the of the building that we're being shown. Um, it, it's it's quite nice to get something that you you can say yes that, that's that's going to fit in Leeds because it it does reflect a lot of what's gone in in Leeds previously in the past, and it's nice to see that sort of, of a facade coming back. Um, the one thing that does interest me here, uh, and we talk about it regularly and, and a lot, is the, the uh, students. Um, so the diaspora of students, they're, they're um, spreading from the traditional areas where, they, where, where, where student accommodation was, um, and, and now being pepper-potted across Leeds. Um, I just wondered, the. Um, when we, we say yes we, we are relieving properties out in the outskirts 
are we are we recording this at all? Are we um, are we able to say yes? This amount of property has become available um, for uh, private accommodation in in suburbia as compared with what is happening in terms of student um, residents in and around the centre. Uh, you know, we we can fool ourselves to some extent, I suppose, by believing that because it's happening, it must be it, you know, it must be the right thing. Um, and yes, it. So much of it is, but are we keeping a watch on it? Is there a balance being kept? Um, and the last thing, uh, the two last things actually, um, as always, I hope that um, this does proceed to a, an application for us to, to look at. Uh, when it does, um, it will be nice to see the materials um, that are going to be used. Um, last bit. Somewhere in this, I heard or read the phrase on-site salvage. I don't have a clue what that is. Anybody tell me? Thank you. Okay. Um, David, do you want to address the on-site salvage? It's a question, really, but it uh, seems a reasonable one. Thank you. Um, I think the... I must admit, I thought, I thought you said bomb-site salvage then, which is clearly not what... Um, what was meant. Um, On-site salvage of materials, yes, that's something that we, we uh, fundamentally support. How and where and what is something that we're working through with that contractor. Um, so we recognise the principle, we support the principle, but I haven't got any details as yet, but we will ensure that all of that assessment is, is brought forward as we bring the application forward. Thank you, David. And people who have been watching the news today will have seen that uh, Manchester, who were about to build their first park for 100 years, was talking exactly about that on-site salvage and reusing the material on the, on the news item. So I guess it's a, it's a current thought, something to bear in mind. Nice Councillor Nash, Nash, you want to come back? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I following on from my comments about the uh, on central road the 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 crescent of of, of the um of the building um i i thought it was just too too dominant i've been absolutely staring at the photograph uh, it's on page 25 in our pack and i wonder if it's because the the reveals and the horizontal uh, lines on the building are too deep. Um, it's obviously it's not for me to uh, tell an architect how to do the job, but I wonder if they could just look at making it less prominent so that it, it it's more subtle. But of course, you might come up with something quite different. But I, I thought I ought to make that comment now. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Nash, that, that's helpful. Um, we'll all have our opinions on that, I guess. Mm. Um, Anyway, uh, I think that concludes members' uh, comments. Uh, very interesting comments. I'm sure they were of great value to David and his team, who will give consideration to it as we move forward. Um, so just remains for us then to answer some questions, if you don't mind. Uh, and I'll, there's quite a few. I'll take them slowly. Um, <laughs> I might ask you to show your physical hand to save time on this one. Okay, first one being, do members consider that the proposed redevelopment of the site for retailing and student accommodation is acceptable in principle? I imagine that's a big yes for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Subject to confirmation of detailed proposal, do members support the approach? Yeah. Yep. Is that a general yes? Yeah. Yeah, Joe, yeah. Thank you. Um, I should have said towards living conditions for the student accommodation, but that's a general yes, yeah. Do members support the proposed scale and form of the development? Well, I guess it's generally yes, but there was one or two who had comments to make, so that will be considered. Okay. Uh, do members consider that the development proposed 
provision for transportation and accessibility are acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep, very, very sustainable occasion. Okay. Subject to confirmation of detail, do members support the approach to sustainable development? Oh, yeah. Just read that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same one. Uh, and that concludes our questions. Thank you for that, David. Ed and Richard, I hope uh, uh, it's been useful from what you've heard from members, but it seems to be that it's generally well supported, a bit claggy bits around the edges, but we can develop them as, uh, as it comes forward. Uh, so please help us to rede redevelop this part of the city. We'd love, to, we'd love to see it happen. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, members. That's been really helpful, really insightful. And uh, we will develop the scheme further as you've uh, as you've recognised. And um, Merry Christmas to you all. And Merry Christmas to you and your team, David. And uh, season greetings to uh, all my fellow councillors and officers. Have a great Christmas. Uh, and we'll see you in the new year when we all come back and do it all over again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank your you, Chair. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.